hear that? <gasps> Holy crap. I'm pretty sure that's a Bigfoot. Let me tell you a story. Welcome to season two. Welcome to another season two episode of Bigfoot Campfire Stories. The story comes from a few decades back while a group of football players partied at a bonfire. Mark and Wayne found out it was more than just the trees watching them. Let's hear their story. Well, Mark and I were hanging out by the bonfire. It was Friday night before the homecoming game, and a bunch of us decided we'd score some brews and head up to the edge of town and have a bonfire to enjoy the night. We had made a party spot during junior year, and the local cops hadn't found it yet, so we should be good all night long. Well, it had already been a few hours, and everyone had taken a turn at the keg. One of the guys that brought along was half-empty to begin with. Mark hit me on the arm as he passed by me, saying he's got to go take a leak. Well, I kind of paid attention to where he went so that he wouldn't sneak up behind me and pants me as usual in front of a bunch of dudes. He was kind of weird that way. Well, it wasn't about 30 seconds before we all heard Mark just scream out, What the F? and come flying past us, jumping into my truck and locking himself inside. Well, I went over to him and I asked what the heck was going on, and he said something really big and hairy as could be grabbed him while he was taking a whiz in the woods. And his face was quickly going white as if he was getting into some kind of shock. Well, I told him to come with me, but he said he wasn't getting out of the truck until we left. So I really, really had to take a leak myself. So I grabbed a floodlight out of the back of my truck and headed over to where Mark had run out of the woods. Well, I heard Mark yelled at me not to go back there and to, to tell the others what had happened. We should all leave like right now. But I didn't heed his warning. I stepped up to the wood line and the floodlight in one hand as I was unzipping my fly, I nearly blinded myself. Well, just as I had let the fluid fly, I heard a kind of a quick gasp, as if there was a person shocked to see me peeing in the woods. Well, I shined my light at the sound, and sure enough, 20 feet in front of me was this seven-foot-tall, hair-covered creature staring back at me. Well, as the light hit its eyes, I could see how big the orbitals were, and they were just huge, much bigger than ours, and it lifted a really long arm up in front of them to shade them from the light let out a whoop, and ran off out of sight. And as of all of this is happening, about ten seconds has gone by. Well, by the time I reached the fires, the fellas standing there were already pouring beer on the fire and kicking dirt on the flames as they heard the whoop and wanted to get the hell out of there, too. Well, I passed them and jumped in the truck, started it up, started to get the heck out of there just as fast as we could all manage. All the while, Mark beating me in the arm, yelling, See? I told you! I told you! Never again! over and over. Well, we hit the highway and trying to think of what to do. Mark had said that there were some kids over at one of the local farms working on a parade float, so we headed there to tell them what had happened. By the time we had got there, poor Mark was a mess. He was kind of shaking a bit, and his face was just drained of all blood. He was nearly white as a ghost. So I got out of the truck and went over to the kids. Well, it turns out Mr. Jensen from school was there helping with the float, he was our science teacher. Well, he thought for sure we had to be joking or pulling their leg or something, but when we took him over to see the truck where Mark was, he knew it was no joke. Well, Mr. J asked Mark what he had saw, and he had told us while he was in the tree line taking a leak, something came up behind him and grabbed his arm and then pushed him. When Mark turned around to kick whoever it was in the face, he was right directly in front of a creature, at least a foot taller than he was, and Mark was six foot three. He said it was a hulking in size, possibly 400 pounds or more. When Mark screamed out, the creature covered its ears and ran off. Well, both of us must have seen the same creature, because everything he said, long, dark hair at the bottom of the arms included, surely rang true with what I saw as well. Well, Mr. J convinced us to take him back to the exact spot it happened, which now blows our party spot, but I doubt any of us are going back there after this, so we agreed and piled into some cars and went out to the edge of town. Well, once we hit the main road with so many cars heading in the same direction, Hank, the local deputy sheriff, looped around and followed us to the location. By the time we had explained to him what we were doing there, the local highway patrolman Andy was there as well. Well, there were several kids already off walking into the woods with flashlights. 
and the police went over to the spot to have a look around. Well, it wasn't but a few minutes when they came back with all the kids in tow and told us if we knew what was good for us, we'd leave and not come back. Mr. J agreed, and they told him that meant him as well, much to his surprise. Neither of the police admitted to seeing anything, but as we got back into the cars and pulled away, they were taking out crime tape and roping things off. We never did go back to that party spot again. The Floor County of Oklahoma sure has a lot of Bigfoot sightings, and many, if not most, seem pretty credible. These students learned their lesson while partying in the woods. Just what would you have done? Leave us a comment with how you would have handled the situation. Thanks for watching. I'm Reverend Jeff, and may the Squatch be with you.